Uh, good morning. I'm making this presentation on behalf of my colleague Jennifer Wagman, who was not able to be here, and is focusing on a cluster randomized trial with the impact of intimate partner violence and HIV, including other uh, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, as well as HIV incidents. Uh, Intimate partner violence is both a cause as well as a consequence of HIV. And this is measured through two mechanisms. Uh, one of the mechanisms is the direct mechanism where mostly women and girls uh, who are sexually abused undergo rape. And eventually they can be able to be exposed to HIV. In most cases, uh, these victims of uh, violence uh, tend to be at high risk behaviors of exposure to HIV and the perpetrators who are the men in most of the cases are HIV infected. We do know that intimate partner violence and HIV studies, uh, prevention interventions have been conducted, uh, but uh, again the results show that none of these have both reduced uh, IPV as well as HIV infection. This study uh, was conducted uh, between 2005 and 2009 in Rakai by the Rakai Health Sciences Program, uh, which implements the Rakai Community Cohort Study. I'll briefly explain about the Rakai Health Sciences Program, which is an HIV other infectious diseases, reproductive health research, and a service provider within the district. Uh, and I'll briefly, in the next slide, talk a little bit about the RSCCS. The objective of this study was to evaluate the impact of IPV prevention intervention, uh, which is called, we acronymed it, the SHARE, the Safe Homes and Respect for Everyone, so that within the SHARE, there's respect and there is no violence in any case. Uh, but uh, in so doing, we wanted to reduce uh, IPV as well as uh, HIV incidence. Briefly about the Rakai Community Cohort Study, within which this control trial, within which this randomized tri trial was um, conducted, uh, the RSCCS is conducted within 50 areas or 50 communities. And we conduct approximate line of surveys, uh, enrolling all consenting adults between the age of 15 to 49. And as we collect the data, we also collect biological specimens, including blood for HIV diagnosis. From within this cohort, we used the three rounds of the RSCCS uh, for this cluster randomized trial. The baseline, which started at 2005, we conducted it for 16 months and two follow-ups, which took 19 and 18 months. The trial was registered with the clinical trials and with that number indicated. The 11 clusters, uh, which I've talked about in the previous uh, slide, under the Rakai Community Cohort Study, were then randomized to intervention and exposure. Uh, to intervention, which is the exposure arm, and the control. Uh, the intervention is the share, the safe homes for respect for everyone. And you're seeing two arms here, the control arm, which was allocated to seven regions, and the intervention arm, which was allocated to four regions. The difference in the allocation or the imbalance is because of resources, because we had to add on additional activities within the intervention arm. There are two panels. Uh, one of the panels is the routine RHSP services. Those are the activities that we conduct across the program. Under the intervention, which is the share, we had to add on, which would be panel two, we had to add on enhanced HIV services. 
whereby we had to look at improved IPV and HIV prevention education, training of counselors in IPV, uh, ART counselors in AITB. Uh, we trained the people, the counselors, and also pilot tested IPV within the intervention arm. But specifically for this intervention, we had to go a little bit further uh, to include uh, IPV prevention activities, which included advocacy, uh, men and boys programs, capacity building, community activism, learning materials, special events for everyone, and then the youth program. We did measure IPV in three, three types, emotional, physical, and sexual IPV using conflict tactics scale whereby we were asking the women whether they've ever experienced uh, violence and the perpetrators, whether they've ever violated or participated in an act that uh, seemed to have violated the women. We also measured risk behaviors and we didn't include all the risk behaviors. The selected ones here are spouse rape, either total or extramarital partners, alcohol use with sex, condom use, and disclosure of HIV marital status. We used modified personal regression models to estimate the prevalence rate ratios. We should have used the log binomial, uh, but uh, with the outcomes, maybe let me mention here that uh, the outcomes, IPV and uh, HIV incident were dichotomous. And using log binomial with these variables out as outcomes, there would be no convergence. So using a modified Poisson uh, would do modify the log binomial and be able to estimate the prevalence rate ratios uh, which would be more applicable and more better estimate than the odds ratios. We adjusted models uh, controlled at baseline IPV measures of interest and covariance correlated with the violence outcomes. And those that were found at a P level less than uh, 0 0.05, uh, we consider them to be significant between the trials at baseline. We diagnosed HIV uh, using double EIA, ELISA, and confirmed it with Western blot. And we measured HIV incidence per 100 person years with the assumption that cell conversion occurs at midpoints of the intervals. Again, we uh, calculated incident rate ratios of HIV acquisition using the Poisson regression. And given the period of the trial, uh, the univariate and multivariate analysis to estimate the incident rate ratios between intervention and control uh, were done over the 4.5 year period. This, best, this table shows the baseline characteristics of what we measured, and we can see that between the control and the intervention for women, uh, it was significant. There, there, there was more, it showed more physical and sexual, sexual uh, violence among women in the control than the intervention. Uh, past intimate partner rape was also significant, as well as partner disclosure of HIV and self-disclosure of status to partner, uh, including HIV prevalence. Uh, those were much higher in the control than in the intervention. And both that scenario is also correct for the men, but uh, the levels of difference uh, was only in sexual among the men. Uh, partner intimate rape, um, number of sexual partners uh, among the men, as well as partner disclosure. I would like now to share with you the impact of this intervention uh, on IPV in the final follow-up. 
Whereas we showed that at the baseline, it wasn't as high, uh, but share intervention uh, reduced significantly physical and sexual intimate partner violence among women, even when we adjusted these rates. Emotional intimate partner violence uh, didn't show any significance. Among the men, nothing was uh, significant. And we had yesterday for the baseline age education marital status and previous experience of IPV uh, for both women and the perpetrators, including non marital status. In terms of um, impact on behavior risk factors, uh, we've seen that the share intervention reduced spousal rape significantly. It increased HIV results disclosure in all categories, and it reduced HIV incidence in the population. Even when we stratified it by men and women, the reduction was still significant. However, we did not see any associated change in the number of partners, alcohol use uh, with sex, as well as condom use. To conclude and share a little bit of uh, the implications as well as recommendations, uh, the intervention uh, reduced women's experience of IPV and overall HIV incidence. And this is probably because there was a marked reduction of rape and increased HIV disclosure, uh, whereby partners could probably be able to uh, share results. Uh, we need to recommend that HIV prevention programs should integrate intimate partner violence prevention into existing protocols where possible, but also uh, this share approach can be shared or can be effective uh, for IPV prevention in other areas in Uganda and uh, probably other regions. However, we need to comprehensively do research to understand how trauma or probably physiology related to forced sex might increase the risk of HIV infection. I'd like to end by acknowledging the funders of the Rakai Community Cohort Studies, at that time especially Bill Melinda and Gates, the National Institutes of Health. Uh, Jennifer was supported by Fogart for her training, which uh, this work is coming out from, the share impact measurement, share intervention, the President's Emergency Fund uh, for AIDS relief, PEPFA, and maybe at this point I must mention that uh, within Rakai Health Sciences Program, we started providing antiretroviral treatment in 2004. So even when we were conducting this trial, HIV-positive individuals were under care and treatment for HIV. Uh, the analysis team and the insightful and guidance are from different people. And many thanks go to the Rakai Health Sciences team. Uh, some colleagues are seated in here. The share intervention team, and of course the study participants with whom uh, uh, this data cannot be available if they were not there. Thank you very much. <laughs>